Authentic Health Coaching Show. My name is Tom Corson Knowles, founder of Authentic Health Coaching. And we want to thank you for subscribing to the Authentic Health Coaching Show today. So we have an amazing free gift for you with Dr. Corson's top five nutrition tips. It is the number one guide to taking your health to the next level. And you can get your free report at AuthenticHealthCoach.com. Now today on the show, we have an incredible guest for you, Loon Lim. And Loon is from Australia. He's the founder of Men's Living Magazine in Australia. And uh, he's got an amazing story of how he recovered from liver failure as a teenager. And he really shares in this show today about the importance of your attitude and the importance of your mindset and the importance of your thoughts and what you think about yourself and about your health and about your diet. You see, because you could know all the nutritional information in the world, all the facts, all the exercise information in the world, but if you don't apply it, if you don't put it into action, and if you don't have that positive mindset and attitude that allows you to do that on a consistent basis and to feel good about who you are inside, then it can be hard to, to have real, vibrant health, energy, and vitality. So that's why it's so important to focus on the mental aspect, and Loon is an expert on the mental game of health. And, of course, he shares that with millions of people through his Men's Living magazine. So enjoy the show today, take great notes, and make it a wonderful day. Well, Loon, thanks for coming on the Authentic Health Coaching Show today. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and you know, how you got interested in health in the first place? All right, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Um, really, the bare fact of it is today I'm 31. Um, in a nutshell, as a 29-year-old self-made millionaire, uh, my 28th birthday present, to myself was a brand new Porsche, it was red, but um, it wasn't always that way. When I was 17, I suffered from liver failure. Um, I spent most of my year 12 in high school, dropping in and out of hospital, and at 17, the doctor said to me that um, I needed a liver transplant. At 17 years old, I was like, well, that's, you know, that's pretty shit, and the doctor said, um, even if a liver transplant was successful, I could potentially still go blind. So, when I was 17, I um, didn't know much about life, and I thought, okay, fine, that's cool, but um, I learned that in high school, when I was studying developing countries at the age of 16, I learned that 30,000 children die every day from malnutrition and lack of clean water. Most of them don't live up to the age of four or five. So I thought there I was, lying in the hospital bed, 17, suffering from liver failure, and I thought, um, I had still 17 good years growing up living in Australia, so um, I pretty much just um, pulled my socks up and had the real attitude of gratitude, living 17 awesome years, and um, from that point on, I just started developing a positive attitude, and I never had a liver transplant, so my eyes are still good, and um, that's really what it was, having a positive mental focus all the time. And that's what healthy and men's living magazine is essentially your health, fitness, nutrition, all based on the solid foundation of having a positive, healthy mindset, healthy mind, healthy body. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. That's amazing. That's a, that's a really cool story. Um, and you know, there's so many people out there who have health challenges. And maybe they don't have liver failure. Maybe they're not about to die. But maybe they just get sick all the time, or they've got some kind of disease, some kind of condition they're dealing with, and they're scared. So, what would you say to someone who's in that condition, who's sick? You know, what would you say to get them, uh, you know, inspire them or to educate them or motivate them to have that positive attitude? Uh, really, it's um, having that mental attitude comes from within. You've got to be strong. And um, really, if you're sick at any point, then it's your thoughts that can kill you. The power of the thought, the power of the mind is really unbelievable. So it's um, just really kicking on and um, staying focused, feeling good all the time. Your thoughts, there's a, there's a real simple trick to your thoughts, and that's just by your feelings, how you feel, would tell you how to think. So by feeling good all the time, just um, whatever you know, gets you going, you could watch YouTube for five minutes a day, and just by laughing and feeling good, that's going to physically and mentally heal you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I mean, there's so many studies on laughter and, and how it helps uh, boost your immune system and help heal, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, look at Lance Armstrong. That guy um, had um, testicular cancer, but yet, how did he go on to conquer seven Tour de France uh, championships? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like, um, I think he had, um, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer, and it was a tumor, and um, I think it went to his brains and his lungs. 
and this guy was pretty much riding a bike, the Tour de France, which is like from one side of Australia to the other, Sydney to Perth, but in the Alps. You know what I mean? And they're winning it seven times, not just once. That's the you the strength of the mind, real positive mindsets. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But, you know, a lot of people were listening to this and they say, well, you know, Lance Armstrong or Loon, you know, you guys are really successful and you've overcome these challenges, but, you know, I- I'm not like you. Maybe you were just born that way. You were born a prodigy or a genius or something like that. So what would you say to that? Um, we all come out of um, our mother's womb, whether we're in Australia, whether we're in America, whether we're in Canada, whether we're in South America. I think we're all born equal. Um, all the opportunities um, that we're given is exactly the same as anyone else. You look at um, Oprah Winfrey, she didn't know that she was poor, and until she read the books that she read is why she thought, hold on a second, something's not right here. And now she's one of the most successful um, billionaire TV presenters of all time. So really, it's just um, accepting responsibility. As soon as you can accept responsibility for who you are, what you've done, you really are um, going to bring energy to the world. So with that positive mindset, you got to take that forward. Um, it's not easy to do, but hey, nothing was great was ever achieved without um, some sort of obstacles in your way, right? Absolutely. I mean, you can't fly without gravity. You need the obstacles to overcome them to become stronger so you can achieve the things that you want to achieve in your life. That's right, man. Yeah. And with Men's Living Magazine, we really want to promote and we want to empower Australian men or men in general just to empower their masculine pride. Um, everything from quitting smoking, living that epic lifestyle, getting that relationship, it's just um, what we pride ourselves on. Um, it's all just about getting that mind, getting in that moment. Um, you know, like, the other day I received a call, I do a bit of life coaching as well, and this client, uh, he wants to quit smoking. And I know that the average smoker in Australia smokes 20 cigarettes for about 30 years. In those 30 years, there's about two and a half million pops. And um, we really want to empower a real healthy, strong, positive mindset. We know that um, the Australian government makes about 5.8 billion in revenue from smoking alone. McDonald's spends about 2 billion in advertising a year. So what are we trying to do to really get Australian men and eventually take this title worldwide to really empower Australian men to live that healthy lifestyle, being fit, grabbing a great family, having the relationships and really just power on. That's awesome. That's an awesome message. Well, I know in America, it's such a huge problem with the obesity epidemic and diabetes and cancer. I mean, like one in two guys die of cancer in America and the other half get heart disease. So, I mean, is it as bad in Australia? Uh, it's pretty bad. I was remember reading um, another article. Um, I think it was like $1.2 trillion is spent on health every year in America. In Australia, we spent, I think it was either $4 million a day on health care. But I don't really call it health care. I call it sick care because... All we're doing is the treatment. We're not really looking at the prevention. Now, if you want to ask me how would we prevent it, um, it's pretty simple, really. You've got to eat a lot of fish, you got to eat vegetables, and um, you got to laugh a lot. Because mm-hmm. laughing really does, it's a, a natural medicine. Laughing really is a good cure. And um, also have a lot of sex as well. That keeps you healthy. Absolutely. you got to live a balanced <laughs> life, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. It's, um, yeah, it's uh, just some real good tips. Um, just eating your vegetables every day. I, I would have, I try to have a uh, glass of fresh carrot juice, and that just has heaps of vitamins, minerals, enzymes. Um, just keeping a real balanced diet with the vegetables. It also prevents all various types of cancers, delays decrease, and um, really good for um, avoiding the symptoms of age aging. Mm-hmm. So fish. I reckon you should eat lots of fish. You know, you got the omega three fatty acids. Um, reduces a range of diseases from everything from childhood asthma, cancer, um, yeah, high level of mercury, which is really good. So, grilled steam poached. Not a lot of people like fish, but I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, are these all things that you do personally? I mean, what are some things that you do? Obviously, you're eating the fish and the vegetables and eating a healthy diet and the carrot juice. But what do you do mentally to prepare yourself, you know, on a daily basis? What's kind of your routine or your regimen that keeps uh, you healthy? Sure, my routine, every day when I get up, I really, um, maybe do about 50 push-ups as soon as I get out of bed. 
I go to the gym often, but um, if I do 50 push-ups in the morning, that does make me feel good. And as soon as you feel good, you release the chemical toxins in your brain to say, hey, you feel good, then you're going to have good, clean, healthy thoughts. It's very, it's pretty much impossible to feel negative uh, when you're feeling good. If you were just to stand there and with your arms stretched out and put a big grin on your face, uh, physically and uh, using your physiology, it'd just be impossible to be sad. So feeling good gives you a positive thoughts, and just by doing that, you can get through every day and um, just feeling and being good. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So let's talk about physiology then. So what are some things, because I think a lot of people don't understand, especially men, they don't understand what how their physiology affects them. So physiology, it's it's um, if you walk down the street and you walk over with a hunchback, then you got a lack of confidence. But as soon as you fake it till you make it, walk down the street, chest puffed out, walk keep straight, walking totally with the confidence of your Donald Trump, your Robert Kiyosaki, of anyone, then you're pretty much telling the brain with your physiology to tell your brain psychologically, hey, I feel good, I am good, and therefore you're going to emanate that. It, it's impossible just to have a shit day once you change your physiology. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, one of one of my mentors is very successful, very healthy, a very rich man. You know, he said, you know, when I walk into a room, I think, look out, room, I'm coming through. And, like, that's his <laughs> attitude, right? And, like, I think that has to be your attitude as a guy. You know, you've got to, you talk about that masculine pride and, you know, living a healthy, positive mindset. You know, you've got to have that self-confidence to just walk into a room and be like, hey, you know, I am number one. And it's not that you think you're better than everyone else, right? But that you just respect yourself and you're confident. You can go up to strangers and say hello and start a conversation. Or, you know, if your friends rag on you for not eating cake for dessert, you say, you know, I don't eat that junk. I don't need it because I'm living a healthy lifestyle. That's it. And um, wise words from your mentor. Just, hey, look out, rude. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So tell, tell us a little bit more about Men's Living Magazine. I mean, how did you get involved with that and kind of what do you guys do? Yeah, well, we had a message and we wanted to spread that out. So we, if we're empowering Australian men uh, to empower their masculine pride, then we got to live it, we got to be it. And it's something that we've had in the works for a while. So getting this message out through the magazine uh, just seems very logical. Uh, right now we've got the mensivingwebsite.com.au and with the magazine with print as well. Um, the feedback from readers, subscribers has been absolutely fantastic. Um, the message that we're spreading out, it's not just the health, the fitness and nutrition, but that positive mindset, that's a missing link in a lot of today's publications and print. Combining it all together through the fitness, through the psychology of it all, it's um, just a great mix. So yeah, the feedback's been great. That's awesome. And you know, I think that's so important because I think that's where a lot of people fail uh, in their fitness program or their nutrition program. Because you know, if you take an Australian or an American, 95% of them know you know, if you got a salad on one hand and a burger on the other, the salad is obviously the healthier choice. But they don't always make that healthier choice, and it's about the psychology. Because, you know, the biggest obstacles we have are on the inside. We're always self-sabotaging ourselves. And so I think that's awesome that you guys focus on the psychology to help people overcome those, those barriers and those challenges. Yeah, that's right. Um, the psychology is always very important. It's, um, we've got, like, it's amazing. We always go back to psychology and you know we should have three brains we've got the reptilian brain the mammal brain and the primate brain so the psychology of it all we could trend um follow psychology all the way back from the caveman errors from the reptilian brain the fight or flight so when we are given the option with between the burger and um the salad it's simply a matter of you know subconsciously programming your way how to get to the root cause so you know that the salad is a healthy issue but yet, you know, the burger might taste nicer. And that's just um, because of our upbringing. You know, in developed countries and third uh, world, it's a lot different. But when McDonald's spends $2 billion in advertising a year, then it's psychologically telling us, um, hey, eat this because we made some sort of connection sooner, here, there, or after. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we're programmed, you know, all the ads on TV, thousands of ads for junk food and this and that. And, uh, you know, most people just think, oh, well, I just like the burger better, but, you know, there's a reason why you like it better. It's because of all those ads and all that brainwashing basically going on. Yeah, that's right, and all that brainwashing, we are brainwashed about 4,000 ad symbols of businesses, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, um, everything from adverts to bus ads to big um, posters. Four th- uh, I think it was three or 4,000 
every day. It's just um, horrific. And um, not a lot. To, yeah, there are those healthy um, ads, but um, if you're making more money from tax and tobacco and junk foods, and that's just the way the market is. Obesity um, is pretty bad in Australia, so I've read all the articles, and is it bad over there in, in America as well? Obesity and child yeah. obesity. Absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely horrible. And uh, 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. And it's somewhere between 30 and 40% of them are obese. So it's just a huge epidemic. And it's getting worse. That's right. Um, we really got to focus on the younger generation and getting them in a healthy, positive mindset. We've got like 680 muscles in our body. And every 48 hours, if you don't use it, then we lose it. So uh, that shows you the importance of exercising. Mm. Absolutely. Well, and you know, you talk about all the advertising going on and, and with McDonald's and things like that. You know, isn't that why it's so important to have, you know, to choose where you get your information from? Because if a lot of people, they just sit and watch the tube, the TV, all day long, and they're just getting brainwashed by that stuff. You know, wouldn't it be better to subscribe to, like, Men's Living Magazine or, you know, have your favorite blog or website where you go for information on health or on business or on whatever? Because then, at least you know you're getting information from people that you trust and in the, their area that you want, right? That's right, that's right. So getting the information is important and whether we know um, facts and research right down to a T, if we know that we eat less and we exercise more, then we can't stuff it up. We really are blessed to be living life, so um, let's live that healthy lifestyle. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, is there anything else you want to share with us? I mean, I mean, what else does living a healthy lifestyle mean to you? Living a healthy lifestyle means having the attitude of appreciation and really not overindulging. Sure, if you really wanted to indulge and eat the foods, because say, I myself, I'm a cancer and I love food, then you might do something, just do something practical. Maybe Monday to Friday, eat healthy, and then indulge on the weekend. So there's that, that, there's that balance. And as long as you're doing some sort of exercise, whether it's having sex, walking to work every day, or um, just having a quick jog, run home, then it, it's something. But at least something's better than nothing. You really got to start somewhere and, um, you know, get that kick in, building the momentum and keep it going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think, like you're talking about, momentum is so key because a lot of people, that's where they fall off is they don't get that momentum in their workout program and their diet. So, you know, they just, well, maybe they'll go to the gym for a week and then they'll quit. That's right. So if you go to the gym for a week, well, you only go to the gym for two or three months and then quit. And then what we see is results that are incongruent and they're not consistent. So um, it's like your motivation. So you could be overweight for like five years, you could be overweight for 10 years, and all of a sudden decide that you want to make a change. But when we look at the core issue of that problem, from a psychological standpoint, we have to understand where that comes from. And psychologically, I'm um, studying a little bit of neuro-linguistics programming, NLP, brain psychology, and these days I'm really, really focused on accelerated human transformation. So for, as soon as we can knuckle out that root cause, we can just really explode our change, having that epic lifestyle. A lot of my clients, I've worked with them, and um, we don't get to the root cause straight away, but as soon as we find the root cause, we just absolutely change their lives. It's, it's amazing. I saw one client last week, and um, he was about 120 kilos. I'm not sure how heavy that is in pounds. But um, like two sixty two seventy. What would that be, Tom? Would it's like know? 270 around there. So was yeah. that pretty heavy? Yeah, it was really over. Yeah. That's obese, yeah. Yeah, it is obese. So it was like 120 kilos. He was about seven, oh, maybe like six ten, uh, tall. And by Sunday afternoon to Wednesday, he had already lost two and a half kilos just by eating less, exercising every day. But that was only because we found the root cause of his um, issues. And once he decided to make a change, then his whole life turned around. And that was probably gone back maybe a month ago. Um, I just got an email from him on the weekend, and he's, I think he's, he's lost about uh, 12 kilos now. So he's doing really good. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and, and how do you get to that root cause of, of whatever's holding you back? Um, everyone has triggers, and it really comes from your upbringing. From the ages of zero to seven, we're like a sponge, and you just kind of like, uh, you just keep soaking everything in. It's like the imprint period. Uh, 7 to 14, you're in the modeling years where you choose to model off people. So a lot of the root cause, um, smokers who want to quit smoking and people want to lose weight, they're all doing it psychologically. And 
once we can find that red cause, we can just explode their change. Um, if you would ask me, hey, how do we find that red cause? It's different for everyone. Another client the other day that I saw very quickly uh, for one session, we just found out what his root cause for smoking was. And it was just really from modeling somebody he looked up to and he thought it was um, acceptable. So he knew that he didn't want to um, continue to smoke because over an average lifetime, like I said, he, um, it's about two and a half million puffs over 30 years, 20 cigarettes a day. Now, his grandfather was smoking two packs a day but, and lived up to the age of about 86. His dad was also a small smoker, but his dad died from lung cancer before he turned 50. So he knew if he didn't make a change now, then he could either be his grandfather or he could either be his dad. He didn't want to take the risk. It was like 50-50 split. So finding his root cause, something inherited in the family, being brought up with it, um, thinking what it was okay. Um, once we got to the root cause and we told his brain psychologically and we programmed all the neural pathways to say, hey, it's not okay, he just never lit up again. So, yeah, it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, and it's so cool, too, to see someone when they just make that complete 180-degree shift where, you know, they're smoking their whole life and all of a sudden one day, you know, they decide to quit, right? And so what is it that makes that difference? I mean, for you, obviously, you know, it was your, your liver failure and your doctor saying, you know, you might not make it. Was that really what did it for you? It made you say, hey, I've got to change? Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, a 17-year-old kid who doesn't know anything and just goes on life and playing with his mates every day and going to school, mucking around, not taking anything too seriously, when faced with the reality of, hey, you know, liver's going to pretty much, um, it's pretty much useless. And then you have to ask yourself these questions. What's going on? What's going on with myself? What's going on with life? So really, when you start to ask yourself questions, you really get good answers. The quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of the questions you ask yourself. Mm. So by asking quality questions, your brain is triggered to find these answers. So it really just takes you to another level. That was the major turning point of my life. It was a painful experience. It was a horrible year, but going through that made me the person that I am today. Mm. Absolutely. You know, I, I totally believe that, that the quality of your life is dependent on the quality of your questions. You're so right. So what are some of the questions that you, you know, ask yourself or with your clients that, you know, to help get them uh, on the right track? Right, so questions um, trigger the brain. So asking questions such as, if you were to go throughout your day and you wanted to just appreciate life and appreciate um, your health and your fitness and your good health, um, you would ask yourself the question, how could I continue to appreciate my good health? Because the, the presupposition in that is telling your brain that you already have good health, you already have an awesome life with great fitness. So ask yourself the question, how can you continue to enjoy this good health? Mm -hmm. Carrot juice. You know, have a salad instead of a burger. That's how you do it. it, it it's, it's a great way to um, live each day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I think that's a great question because you're right. I mean, no matter how overweight you are, how bad your diet is, you know, you know you're doing some things right, right? And so it's just continuing to do those things right and, and making a few changes along the way. That's right, and every little change, as long as it's going on the right path, then you really can't lose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, absolutely. Asking those right questions and um, yeah, just kicking it on every day. Yeah, that's right. You know, Jim Rowan, he talks about, you know, your life. It's kind of like a, like a combination lock. You know, maybe you need six numbers dialed into the lock to unlock, you know, the secret to better health or to better financial success or whatever it is. And most of us, we got five of the numbers right. And so we just need one more, right? That's and so right. it's just finding that one more, that next step. That's what it's all about. That's right. So finding that next step, getting the combination lock and um, to that safe, we're all trying to turn that safe. And every time we try and turn, as long as you, you keep hitting an extra lock, hitting an extra lock, then sooner or later you're going to find that key. And um, just by keeping on keeping on and mm -hmm. just continuing enjoying your life, asking the right questions, it's a great way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's just a great message. Yeah.
So what's going on? I mean, obviously, I know you're on top of a lot of the health trends and health news in Australia. What's what's going on? What are some trends or things that we should know about in men's health? Uh, men's health, basically, um, what we want to do is really just... Uh, a lot of men's health at the moment, um, in Australia, mental ill health is the leading cause of death for pretty much all Australians under 45. Um, it's more than car accidents. It's more than binge drinking. It's more than anything else. Mental ill health is pretty much the leading cause of disability in Australia across all demographics, you wouldn't believe it. Male, female, um, all ages. It affects, it pretty much affects more than 4 million Australians every year. It costs the Australian economy about $30 billion every year. So that's why psychology, I believe, is so important. Hmm. If you have the right psychology, then everything stems from that knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it. So, having a strong mental focus is um, really important. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, and so mental ill health, I mean, you're talking about like depression or what kinds of things are you talking about? Yeah, well, when I say mental ill health, it um, includes everything from uh, mental illnesses, depression, uh, cancers, um, all sorts of um, psychological illnesses, mm-hmm. um, something as simple as uh, depression, uh, go all the way to um, just lack of confidence and um, seeing the GP for just because, um, yeah, depression. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think that's uh, a big issue for men too, because a lot of guys, they don't want to talk about it, you know, if you're depressed or you're sad or you've got something going on, you know, it's not cool, it's not macho to talk about your emotions or feelings or things like that. So I feel it's hold yeah. in. That's right. So with our men's living, we want to have our conversation and we want to um, connect with our readers, our subscribers, and we want to tell them that, hey, these are the issues um, in the Australian economy and probably around the world today, and it's okay just to get out there and talk about it And because that's the first step to change. Mm-hmm. Once you can accept it and talk about it, then you're moving forward. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. I mean, I know... Uh, these are some really important issues in men's health, and thank you for sharing them with us. So, where can uh, our listeners get more information about you and your magazine and get in touch with you? Sure. Online, just jump on to mensliving.com.au. And um, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, just it's loon, L U N E, at mensliving.com.au. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Loon, and sharing so much awesome information with us. It's, it's going to help a lot of people. Thank you for having me, Tom. It's been a great pleasure. Hey there, it's Tom Corson again. Hope you enjoyed the show today with Loon Lim. Wasn't that an awesome interview? I mean, this guy, he's a firecracker for sure. He's a very wealthy man, very successful man, and a very healthy guy now because of what he's learned about attitude and what he's learned about mindset. And I think it's so important that you have that awesome confidence, that awesome mindset, that awesome attitude that allows you to just live a really healthy life, a really successful life as well. So thanks again for subscribing to the show. Come check us out at AuthenticHealthCoach.com. Grab your free report and come join the community of like-minded people, people like you and me who are passionate about health, wellness, vitality, energy, nutrition, and fitness. And we're looking forward to seeing you there. Wishing you an absolutely incredible day. Take care now.